Oh, hi, Deacon Lumen. It's hi. nice to it's nice to see you and uh, meet you live. Uh, interestingly enough, we arranged this conversation weeks ago, mm -hmm. when the only thing that was playing on the news was COVID. And recently, something else is playing on the news, and in fact, it should have always been playing on the news, and that's a very serious human rights issue. Uh, I've been, been watching you go to marches, and in, in lieu of something so important, it seems ridiculous to me that I just jump in to ask you about 13 Reasons Why, uh, that is airing tomorrow, when, when we're facing something really, really real, and I wanted to know if we could talk about that. Yes, of course, this is what we're here for. It's up to the individual to do what we can to educate others and, um, and to really be in the midst of all this and not shy away from it. And um, to really talk about the privilege as a, as a white person and to condone the, the implements of what the black community goes through. And um, I think right now this is a perfect platform. Originally, I, I tried to, I discussed with you that I wanted to forfeit my opportunity here and, um, and uh, hand it over to a, a black artist to talk about what they're feeling is because I can't necessarily talk about the hatred and I can't, I, I can't, I don't have, I don't know the hatred that the, uh, that the, every black person goes through. But all I can do is educate myself and to stand beside them and work with them. And just to, just to be there and hold hands and understand that, they, that we need to change and that, that government doesn't hand out freedom and that we need to all be kind to one another, always. And that uh, post-social constructs need to dissipate now. They need to eradicate. Because we've been born in a society where it doesn't, we never even had a chance. Americans are so, I mean, the white Americans are so, we're, they don't educate us. The way that we're supposed to and they told us lies for hundreds and hundreds of years and now is the time to really know the bullshit and let that and tear that building down and to and to build a new building with new kinds of thinking with great love power because if if we don't love each other we're not going to survive i couldn't agree with you more um, I also think white people need to have this conversation and they need to have it publicly because we've been just handing it to our black friends and neighbors saying, oh, you talk about racial injustice. It's happening to you. You talk about it. Well, we're the ones that need to fix it. They've been yeah. trying to because we're the perpetrators of it. So I do think we need to stand up and uh, really have a dialogue about it. Uh, not just do a little post on Instagram and 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 go back to the to the our, our daily lives. Um, you're absolutely right. Even us liberals have white blinders because mm -hmm. just by living as a white person, society has made our lives comfortable so that we don't always see what's happening to our neighbors. Uh, mm -hmm. Just like when I hear comments of white people going, "Oh, I'm colorblind. I don't." see someone as another color, it's negating how different their experiences are. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's important to really address. And I think a key to change is your generation and generations that are younger. Uh, quotes are all over from Nelson Man Mandela to everyone that no one's born hating. Right. It is something that is taught. It is easier to love. Much. It's our yeah. natural state. But it's, you know, uh, Tatiana, it's not just my generation. I think all gen generations need to realize, and we can all change together. My, my generation isn't just on the forefront. We can't be. Yeah. We need all of the back, backing we can get, and people need to understand. And even if it's really tough to tell your family or friends and that when they speak of a racist slur, that that's not okay. 
And then you need to stand right then and there and say, that's not okay. And you need to realize this. And somehow you need to do it without shaming them and, and doing it with, with compassion. And so I, don't, I agree with you that this, our generation, is, uh, we, can make the ch we, we can make the change for the next generation. But I think all generations need some clearing up. And they need to stand, they need to stand together and they need to stand tall and they need to join hands no matter what. Even yeah, if it's getting rid of old social obligations. Yeah. I think the problem is white people are afraid that the black people might treat them like we've been treating them. Yeah. And, 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 and they're not saying we, we want power over you. They're just saying we want equality. It, this fear of having to give up this power structure shows mm -hmm. such unbelievable insecurity, short-mindedness, hatred, it's, it's scary. It's the selfishness of um, what we were brought up in. And, and that comes in with even outcasting, um, outcasting the, the black community by the whites, I mean, by committees. And we, like I was talking to you before about redlining, and there's a great movie documentary called, um, it's called uh, Owned. And um, it's really important to watch by educating yourself and becoming more aware. And this is about um, uh, the post-war housing and the policy that we created for all humans to have um, equal housing, which was absolutely false. Nice. And so we're not giving the opportunities to our black Americans as we have the opportunities as white Americans, the white community gets all of the great opportunities because we put them in this red line district and say their, their child is, is doing really good educationally and he's striving and he wants to be educated and he wants to learn so he can get out of the ghetto. And so the mother or father wants to go to the bank and they want to get a loan and they can't get a loan because of their address. See, this is the, that's the construct that we need to, dis we need to just eradicate now. Yeah. Yeah. And and if we if we were talking about this as a free country, then we wouldn't have red lines. Absolutely, absolutely. It's it's one of the, the big um, <laughs> obstacles and and boundaries for for black people to find equality. It's 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 unbelievable. And if if people are not outraged, they are not for human rights. Yeah. They're just not for human rights. Um, if I were to bring this topic to a, 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 a television platform, mm -hmm. um, not a news platform, but a television platform, entertainment, where people just want to escape. Well, there's a responsibility we have than just escaping. So let's take 13 Reasons Why, for example, that's set in high school. Mm -hmm. You guys were addressing, the show was addressing issues that were affecting high school students, uh, rape, suicide, bullying. Uh, you, you find racism in high school. What do you think classes, or should there be a specific class, and how would that be structured to open our eyes to see what really happens and what we can really do? Well, I'm, I'm no qualified social engineer, but just, um, you know, we used to have home ec, right? You know, homeroom, first hour. Um, but I think we need to bring that in a way and maybe even bring meditation to school. Mm. And, um, and we all sit around together in that empty space in the meditation and go to the subconscious together. And, um, but maybe it's about also history because what we were taught weren't necessarily the, were the truths of real history. So how do we, how do we condone anti-racism in school? I think it starts with the individual, like I said before. It really starts with the individual and the heart and discovering and finding out what the human heart really feels and acting on what you really feel and not 
all of a sudden, oh, I love you, I hate you, I love you, I hate you. It's just, I'm here for you. And it doesn't have to be this, you know, I'm afraid that, you know, black people might want to go down the, um, walk down the hallway and they might feel that they're all of a sudden so many eyes are on them now because they, they feel bad. And that's really hard to do. It's really hard to, it's just about being there. Yeah. We can't, we can't put them in a, in a category and say, Oh, they're, they're so sensitive. No, they're, they're us too, but yeah, they didn't have the head start that we do. So how yeah. do we make it right? And that's the government's job too. It's yeah. the government's job to make it right. And it's the individual's job to make it right with love. Yeah. And to enforce that on the governments, you know, it's interesting. I have a four year old and, um, I found this show. I believe it's a Canadian show. It's a cartoon called Molly from Denali. Uh, and it's a girl that take, it, it takes place in Alaska. Uh, there's no white people in this cartoon and her best friend is black. And there's this one beautiful show. And it, I really have, I just put that on. Mm -hmm. I think it's important. There's this one show where the grandfather, her grandfather was a drummer, but he stopped drumming and she didn't know why. And they entered him into the native drumming contest and he wouldn't, he wouldn't do it. And, and finally, at the end of this cartoon, he said, well, when I was small, the, the white man stole my drums and the white man came into, they stole our language. They stole our dolls. They stole our culture. And it's been so hard for me to be able to connect to my culture again. Thank you, Molly, for showing me it's okay again. Hmm. I literally, like I'm, I could tear up now. It was so impactful because now my son is growing up with this knowledge that this is what happened. Um, and it's happening. And we could start the, ch and it's not right. And you start, the change now. Yeah, sorry. that's all we can do. Don't be sorry. Um, that's all we can do is just starting to change. And we act today, every day. We act in being right for our fellow human beings. And um, the cast of judgment just is this thick blanket that we just seems that it's so hot and we can't get it off and just think about them and how and the shadow that the the shadow that the um old world the old country old america still new america is casting over the the black community the black americans all over and, this and, country and, and, and other and other minorities and, and all over the world yeah the, the shadow that we we cast over them and they feel that they can't get out. So then we say they create sin. And it's it's just it doesn't make any sense. It's the it's the person who's casting the shadow who's creating the ultimate sin. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a little speechless right now. Um but uh I think it's it's important to feel uncomfortable about a situation and I think um uh it's in order to affect change, you have to feel very passionately about something. Um, so I'm, I'm really happy to see all these protests that to are To act, this is a James Baldwin quote. He says, to act is to be committed and to be, to, to be committed is to be in danger. And um, to be in danger with our past feelings and also what we used to just leave on the sideway where we just ignored all the time because we're so selfish and we're doing our own thing and our life is so important. I think if we could just bring all of our lives in together, it would really have a true meaning and we would, we would feel comfortable with each other. And we could walk down the street and not have those old so social obligations arise again and saying, Oh my God, I'm about to, it's, it's not about that. We're just friendly. And I know there's not going to be world peace, but it's, it's really truly up to us. And I can't say it enough to make the change every day. And this isn't for today. This isn't for tomorrow. This isn't 
for just a week. This is for every day. This is for the rest of my life. And so I'll be standing ask, up for I'll sorry. be standing up for the the black community everywhere. You are new to acting, um, relatively. When you are given a script, are you looking for some of those warning signs like this could be very uh, uh white centric um um alienating to blacks and minorities are you looking for that when you read a script i yes but i must say at the first in the in the first when you read a script it's that whole selfish aspect of saying how is it how am i going to look and then what is the message but it's that selfishness of what is this what is this movie making and then what is the message of the movie but i don't read scripts that are um that 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 don't um re that don't go with the way with anti-racism i would never be in a movie like that ever and um i think movies today are our, our education too. We really get educated by movies and, um, and they're not always true. And the movies that are happening today with, um, that aren't really making any sense. And, um, I think we need to make some more powerful movies. Like remember Mississippi burning. Mm -hmm. Remember that movie? Mm -hmm. Gene Hackman. Of course. That was a phenomenal movie, but it showed the terrifyingness of being a black person. You know what else Hollywood has to do aside from that? Put more black people in films. Like, yeah. um, my son loves Toy, Toy Story. Mm -hmm. I am uncomfortable at how white that is. Actually, it's so when funny. I watch yeah. that with him, I am so aware that if I was a black mom with my black kid, there's there's no voice represented that's that that looks like us or sounds like us there's no toy that looks like us all the characters in this movie are white and yeah. i it amazes me that in this day and age we're, we're even making cartoons with all white characters they're just not they just don't get it and they're and they're they're not for um standing up and they're, they're not blind. for yeah they're really blind you know it, it's interesting where this is so much a topic it 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 feels trite to even uh start talking about anything else <laughs> yeah i know i don't feel like talking about anything i don't feel like talking about anything else either um i don't i don't feel like feeling about anything else and um so that's my duty as me to do the research to really understand and that's all i can do right now and walk the line with them and hold hands and um and do my part to spread the good word and the message of what they're going through that's what i use my platform for now i always have i wasn't the social media person whatsoever. I had to get it before the whole, um, the whole uh, thirteen reasons why, and um, but I was just thought about my whole time without social media. I was just being. I wasn't into everybody else's world. I was figuring out who I am, and reading, and um, and watching movies, which is my favorite thing to do, and. Uh, it's just so important just to feel love and compassion for what's happening right now. Look, if we can have, see, George Floyd was a person, but he's also a movement. You see? Oh, oh, and, absolutely. He, he symbolizes. Yeah, he's, he's, no, he's a and martyr. all the other innocent black people who were, who yeah. were mistreated by uh, yeah. police and the government. I mean, yeah. that is the government. So, um, and I just, I'm happy to be living in this time. I'm not scared of it. And um, I'm, I'm happy to be living right now, trying to make the change with everyone else yeah. who wants to, because don't shun somebody for 
trying to spread the word because you don't understand. It's our duty to understand. It's our duty. Yeah. Yeah. Well, De Deacon, at that, I think I want to say thank you for having this conversation with me, um, for sharing your thoughts with our, our viewers. And, you know, I hope that we'll be able to even pick this up again and, and yeah. see what things look like and, and see if we're still talking about the, the exact same issue or if it's evolved. Let's It'd be my let, pleasure. Let's let's yeah, pray for evolution. Yes. Well, you know, good luck on on on, on the show premiering and 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 stand strong at those protests. I know you're out there. Yeah. Um, um let, let's just keep doing what we're doing to make sure yeah. that, that everyone is treated equally. Thank you, Tatiana. Thank you for having uh, me over for this time. And good luck with everything. Good luck with raising your son. <laughs> I know that that can probably, that can, is probably the most terrifying thing in the world. And, and just keep feeling the way you're feeling and manifesting and manifesting for the, for the peace and equality and lead with love. Great. Thanks so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.